That being said, I'm blessed enough that the next three to four years I'll be attending the Ohio State University. Good morning, Bucknutters. It is Tuesday, July 6th, 2021. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. Dwayne Long is here. We are both fully clothed. Dwayne had a two-day run of naked jaunts. He was not arrested. Dwayne, how goes it? Well, since I got away from him and didn't go to jail, I'm doing pretty good. It has been an absolutely unbelievable 48 hours. On July 4th, the number one player in the country, JT Tuomolowau, finally made his commitment to Ohio State, not to be outdone. About 12 hours later, Kojo Antwi, the wide receiver from Georgia, committed to Ohio State. I want to give credit, though, to Brian Hartline, and I have done this several times. The Kojo Antwi recruitment is nothing short of incredible. He came out with a finalist list a little while back that included Alabama, Georgia, Texas A&M, and USC. Ohio State was not on there. Brian Hartline heard this, cranked it up, and now Kojo Antwi is a Buckeye. We will get to the addition of JT, but first, we must discuss Brian Hartline doing it once again. I would encourage everybody to go watch the video of Kojo. He's got some Jalen Waddle-like vibes going. You just said it. The the kid is so damn explosive. I mean, he takes two steps and he's at full speed, and then he can cut off that. When he's in the open field, it is absolutely electric. He's he's six feet tall, too. He'm not some little short kid. He's not a 5'9", 5'10", guy. You're just going to automatically put him in a slot. Uh, On his film, he shows plays. They can make back shoulder catches. He can just go up and make a play on the ball. This was huge. Uh, like you said, I think we both said last week that that uh, we didn't think he was coming here. And and here he is now, a Buckeye. And the kid is really special. When we took Caleb Brown, I thought they were going to be similar, you know, how they were slotted in on our roster. And I thought I really would have hoped that we could have got, uh, got this kid. Um, and, but now we got them both. So it's just Ryan Day's recruiting – is I'm just going to say it. it's even better than Urban Myers. It really is. And, you know, he's pulling down five-star kids after five-star kid. He gets two in a row, two in two days. It's just special what's going on here right now. You've got to love being a Buckeye fan right now. Yeah, the Antwi edition is just incredible. You're talking about adding him to a group. The aforementioned Caleb Brown, got Kion Grays, who absolutely has blown up on the West Coast and – Steve Wolfong said, now probably considered the best wide receiver on the West Coast. Throw in Caleb Burton, the highest ranked of the group out of Texas. It is an incredible foursome. That should end wide receiver recruiting for the class. That's four. It will be the top wide receiver group of the class of 2022. The best defensive end tandem possibly of all time in the class of 2021 now belongs to the Ohio State Buckeyes. We knew about Jack Sawyer. We really thought JT would be coming along. You add in those two with Tyreek Williams and Mike Hall, and you've got an entire line, arguably the best Hall at defensive line Ohio State has ever had. And when you start talking like that at a school like Ohio State, you know you are talking turkey. We probably spent more time talking about JT than any other recruit ever on the BM5. Let's put into context now what you think they got once and for all. Another example of the level that Ryan Day is recruiting at right now. To go all the way out there, he's going into Texas. He just goes into Texas and takes who he wants. He goes in and get this kid. And when you look at I was watching him on film again yesterday, and he really does fall into the freak category. You're looking at a 280-pound kid that looks like he weighs 250, 255. Just a big frame kid and how much weight he can carry. And, and, you know, we're talking about this – I saw an article right after he committed calling him a defensive tackle, and I said, oh, whoa, no, wait a minute. This kid might be one of those very rare Reggie White-type guys that can pay, play in and, and play it well at 300 pounds. 
absolutely believe that, that that's where he's going to start out at. And I bet he sticks there. He's a long kid, uses his hands really well. And, and you get a kid that's already predisposed to, to getting his hands out in front of him and putting his hands on a lineman and getting off of him and giving to uh, Larry Johnson, man, what he can be. And Jack Sawyer is the same way. These kids are already slapping hands away and doing the things that the Bozes were doing and Chase Young was doing. This tandem. And then you've got Zach Harrison, who's still there. It, it's just so loaded at defensive end. But here's another thing. He is so big that on third and long, you slide him down inside and bring one of the other ends in, and you've got the, the Rushman package is, is looking like it's uh, shaping up again here. He is coming in late. A lot of the guys in this class, like the aforementioned Jack Sawyer, are already here. That has caused some consternation about how much he'll be able to contribute early. What is your vibe on JT getting here late and how that will affect his freshman year? You have to look at position when you're talking about playing early. On offense, you really running back is really the only only position that you're going to bring kids in and they're going to be more ready to play as freshmen. Receivers to a lesser extent, but that's about it. On defense, you can bring kids in on the defensive line and linebacker where it's so much more instinctive. Just go. Just you know, you know what you're supposed to do on this play, do it. And you know, and you teach them as the year goes on. He's going to play early. And he's going to play often as the year rolls along. Just it's going to happen. There's there's too much raw talent there, and they're going to want to get him on the field and get him seasoned as quickly as possible. There's no better way to motivate Zach Harrison and Tyreek Smith than to bring in two guys who are literally better than them behind them. I wouldn't be surprised if in pressure situations towards the end of the season, these two guys are on the field. If not, that means Zach and Tyreek or someone else has stepped up. Don't sleep on the depth either. We went into the national championship game down two guys, and it made a major, major difference in the result. I'm not sure there's ever been a defensive end tandem on the field at the same time in the same class like this. What's a day like without a commitment? We are now on commitment watch for two other guys, Cam Dewberry and Chris McClellan. There are crystal balls flowing for each. McClellan is the one I'm really excited about. Talking about adding another elite defensive lineman to this class that's just i mean it just stacking them stacking them stacking them and that's the way it needs to be these guys are going to go early dan defensive linemen are going to go early when they're this good so you need to keep piling them up we saw it with defensive backs this this past season you know we had been been excited about uh, and, and proud of the fact that we were cornerback university well it finally caught up with us had a couple of years where we weren't didn't bring in the most elite guys and, and we paid for it. Now we the last class and this one uh, uh, now, yeah, we're getting some guys that, that belong on the field at Ohio State. But uh, keeping these defensive linemen rolling through here like this, I absolutely believe you win championships, defensive line and quarterback, and we are so elite at, at both spots right now. I mean, it's just uh, Ryan Day. I'm telling you, he's better than Urban Meyer. Dewberry is from Texas. McClellan is from Oklahoma. It always helps to pull guys out of those states, considering those programs have an eye on seeing the Buckeyes possibly down the line in the college football playoffs. We're going to take a quick break, come back, and talk about interesting Internet stuff. All right, the Ohio State Buckeyes posted a picture on their Twitter feed of the linebackers at Top Golf having a fine old time. In those pictures... Pele Gaitote and Steel Chambers. Pele Gaitote, the yet to be announced officially transfer from USC, and Steel Chambers, a former running back we all thought might switch. He was a great high school linebacker as well as a running back. Your thoughts on Gaitote being in the picture? Now, this isn't shocker. And believe me, if it was super controversial, Ohio State would not put that picture out there. And then your vibe on Chambers switching spots. Let me start with Chambers. This is the smart move. This is a win-win for both Steel Chambers and Ohio State. I remember (coughs) three, two, one. I remember looking at that Steel Chambers junior film, and I'm thinking, why are we even talking to this kid about being a running back? He just he didn't rate with some of the kids that we we were looking at at the time. 
Uh, and I think we took him thinking that he would accept this move. He is so much better at linebacker, Buckeye Nation. This kid, he was he was definitely a four star at least as a as a linebacker in high school. Him making this move, and he's done it relatively early. So I think he's going to have an impact. Uh, he'll he'll probably play outside. Um, Gayo uh we don't know what's going to come if he returns to the form that had him the number one linebacker recruit in the country, uh, then he's going to, that's a big help. One thing, he's a bigger kid. Yeah. He's, he's just a bigger kid. You can put him in there in the middle of the, uh, middle of the, uh, uh, linebackers and let him just run downhill and, you know, in plays when you know, you're going to like the Wisconsin's that, you know, are going to try to pound it. So, uh, he could be a great pickup. As a kid coming out of high school, my lord, he was incredible. And it isn't like he was a bum at UC, uh, USC. I looked at, at his stats again, and he had over, over 100 tackles in his time there. So um, he's got something, and maybe getting here, healing up, and and getting it under a better staff. Because you know, there's the Pac-12. Oregon is is the best team out there, and they're not very good. So uh, yeah. Let, let's see what he does does under this staff under Al Washington, and and this uh, uh, and and Curry Combs. I uh, it, it was worth a risk. Let's say that. So um, two more additions to the uh, to the linebacker core, and we're replacing not just three guys, four guys, because Justin Hilliard was playing almost as much as the starters by the end of the year. So we've got we've got holes to fill. Peel Chambers, for those who know anything about him, that guy is sharp as a tack. Switching sides and learning the other side of the playbook at such an instinctive position. I wouldn't be surprised to see Steel Chambers be a contributor this year at linebacker. We've seen you guys flip from fullback to linebacker and make an impact in the past. Get Tote, like you said, he has a chance to be that legit inside plugger. If you look at the picture, he's certainly got the neck for it. We will keep an eye out for the official announcement. Obviously, we do expect that to come sooner rather than later. It's been a whirlwind. You never know what the day will produce. Keep it locked in. We appreciate Dwayne stopping by. Have a good one, Bucknutters. Bucknutters.